pastor of St. Gertrude. Uh, he'll go next. Uh, that would be a fairly good diocesan priest that can sandwich in between the two religious orders. <laughs>
I once asked if I could take the ride because there was one house on Sheridan Road that every two weeks there was fifty dollars worth of food in the case of Eddie's heart. I wanted to see who those people were. <laughs> If you know the people from Barry, I mean, somebody sent you from Barry and give us test to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's really true, and it speaks a lot about the faith that the people. The land was hard, the living was hard, and when they came to this country, it was hard, and the hard part of this made them very successful. Um, so I made it through the seminary. Um, somehow my brothers didn't. They went out, got married, had their families, were into great grandchildren now. Uh, I do have a, a grand nephew named Dominic. And I, he said, um, Dominic, if he was the first, he never would have had any more. Yeah. There's something in the name. And you know, again, preordained. Dominic Grassi. A fat one belonging to the Lord. That's a translation of that. <laughs> every village, every town in Italy, you go to the cemetery, Was a, it was a sign of honor. I bet you had enough money to have meat on your bones. Or thyroid problem. And so um, it was all in the cards for me to become a priest, I guess. Um, I think a lot of it came from working in the family grocery store. We all had to work. Uh, that was preordained. No pun intended. We started when we were about 10 or 11 or 12 years old. We started fronting the cans on the shelf. It was the, one of the first self-service grocery stores in the city of the carts. People didn't know how to use them. They had, they had to be taught on how to put food in the cart and make choices for themselves. And then after that, you became a bagger. And after a bagger, you became, uh, uh, you were on the produce department. And then after that, you were sent away for a weekend to the National Cash Register School on Michigan Avenue and learned how to ring the cash register. I came in fastest, second fastest and most accurate because I could figure out if there were six oranges for 49 cents, how much you, if somebody brought five up, how much you charged on the dollar each. I've been privileged to go back to Garabello for the feast day a number of times. The patrons of uh, the hometown of Garabello thought they made the cheap cosmos of being uh, chance that there is some Iranian blood flowing through us here. We can't uh, trace it back as far as we would like, uh, but uh, there is some of that there. But they were interesting saying to me, my mom would regale me in all the stories, all the legends, and there was the good brother and the bad brother. And the good brother was Damien. He was gentle. He was kind. Cosmos was the mean one. He was a, he, 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 he just, uh, you know, he was kind of mean for Saint. Uh, the story goes when they went up to heaven, St. Peter said, I only got room for one of you on my list. And so uh, and, and they said, which one? And he said, Cosmos. So Cosmos said, okay, I'm coming. And then he pushed in and had him and walked in. Uh, you know, the, 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 the take care of your own is part of that message there because you love them so very, very much. And that, that was very, very important to all of us. Um, and so as I watched my dad and my uncles around the grocery store, you just start to absorb things. Uh, about three blocks away on the <coughs> street, there was a large, very large laundry, one of those uh, almost factory-like laundries. People would uh, leave their clothes to be picked up in the alleys and the bags, and they'd be washed and sent back home. And most of the employees there were African-American. And they would come to the store on Friday night after getting their paychecks on Friday and shop. And some of the, uh, the, the white, um, Customers didn't like that. I didn't want to see those people in the store. And I remember one of them confronting my father. And my dad looked at him very gently and said, you know, money isn't white, it isn't black, it's green. Very pragmatic. And after the customer left threatening to boycott the store, my dad did something very simple. There used to be a 50 cent check cash in charge. He dropped it for all the African American customers. He didn't say anything to anybody was his way of dealing with things. There always was a sense of justice 
that grew out of that very peasant faith that was theirs. Uh, one of the very first Festitalianas uh, uh, that took place, one of the very first, my mom got, her, got into the papers because of it, because she got absolutely, totally berserk upset because she went past the dump tank that they had set up. And they had a sign on it, Dump the Melon John. Oh. And my mother said, you low-class people, you're making us all look bad. She took the sign down and tore it up. And there's a reporter from the Sun-Times took her aside and said, was that a pejorative comment? And my mom said, it means I can't what me to think. I was so proud of that little girl. She only stood about this tall. I was 21 before I realized she wasn't six feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> and it was all a very simple faith that was there. It was, it was something that was part of our lives. The calendars, every year they came from Italy, from the hometown. The monies that would be sent so family could carry the statues on the feast of Cosmos and Damien through the village. My grandmother, Nona, taking me to Columbus Hospital almost every month uh, to the chapel, to the shrine there. And, uh, and saying a prayer there. It was very, very real for us. And because of that, I began to see in my parents how you show your love. You show your love through working hard for those you love. My parents worked really, very, very hard for my brothers and I, especially hard after losing a child. They continued to work hard for us and began to realize that we love our God, we love the people of God, got to work hard for them and with them. And that's been kind of my overriding vision of what it means to be a priest. Just love the people of God. Work with them. Enjoy them. Share your stories. Share their stories. The stories are what are so important. And, and, and we still, to this day, when the parents gone, we still sit around the table with the, after the past is gone for hours telling the stories. And when you tell the stories, the layers come. I found a little booklet once. It was the same as for my grandmother in Italian. And I read one of, the, one of them to my mom. And the saying that I read to her translated into English, I'm the one chopping the onion and you're the one crying. And she smiled. And it was maybe a year or two later, all sitting around the table. And that story came up. And she said, now I'm going to tell you what the real saying was. They cleaned up the book, she said. This is the real saying. And it's the one that stayed with me now on my whole life. She translated it a little bit different. The way she translated it was, I'm the one laying the egg, and you're the one 